Live. Um, we were supposed to have an episode last week, but we didn't because it was crazy. We were like going insane, getting the house ready for the puppy, and um, we found out that steaming your carpet is a lot more labor intensive than uh, it looks like on TV. So it took up the entire weekend, and by the time Josh was like, hey, are you doing the stream? I was like, uh, I don't have anything prepared, so I'm sorry. But today we are doing paninis because we got a little panini. You want to bring her over? Pixel has a sister now. It's a little baby named Panini. So in her honor, we're going to make paninis today and homemade pesto. Goodness, that tummy. The butt. And the little bunny tail. Good, so cute. Okay, Panini. Gosh, the puppy breath, I love it. Okay, I see you at the end of the show. <laughs> Goodbye. You can stay with me though, that's okay. All right, I am gonna wash my hands though because now I have puppy fluff on me. But um, this is gonna be a pretty short episode. Paninis are pretty simple to make and so is pesto. Um, so I'm gonna start by pouring myself a little bit of limoncello because nothing goes better with homemade paninis than limoncello. I mean, it's past 12, why not? Yeah. It is. It is a minute past 12. Plus, this is a sipping thing. This isn't what you, like, slam back. Yeah, it's sipping liquor. And lemon juice. Made from green alcohol. And lemons. And sugar. It's not that bad. Do you want some? No, I want to make coffee, but I guess I'll wait for your stream is done. <laughs> ah, I love limoncello. We have a friend, I think we said this in the episode that my mom was in, we have a friend who makes his own limoncello and it just is, his is so good. You can't even taste the alcohol, but this one you can, so you sip it. Um, okay, we're gonna start with the pesto. So we're gonna take two large garlic cloves. Um, just whole, all you wanna do is skin them. So I'm gonna cut off the tip to make it easier to take the skin off. But um, we're gonna shove those in. I'm going to be using my Ninja Blender but if you've got a food processor, you can use that too. Or if you've got like an old school, what is it? The thing that's the stone and you like grind it. Mortar, mortar and pestle. If you have that, you can do it too, but that's like way more labor intensive. Um, so all I'm doing right now is peeling the garlic. Oh, let me tilt our camera up just a bit. There we go. Um, so we've got a Ninja Blender. I freaking love this thing. It like emulsifies everything. Um, but they're crazy expensive. So how we ended up coming about it actually is his sister Ashley, and I don't know if she's watching or will eventually watch this in the future. Um, oh, maybe I shouldn't tell this story. I don't know if his dad's, oh, screw it. You're gonna find out one way or another. Anyway, so his sister was gifted a, uh, a Ninja Blender. And she doesn't really cook so much. And so it like sat in um, in her car for a pretty long time. And then one day we were all just over at his other sister's house. And she was like, hey, Kendall, do you want a Ninja Blender? And I was like, hell yeah, I want a Ninja Blender. And she was like, OK, here you go. I just gave it. So that's how we got our really cool blender. Um, this thing is great. With ninjas, you can make like peanut butter with them. Uh, you can, because these blades are insane. You can ground meat with them. They're great. But, um, if you have a food processor, it'll do the same thing. This garlic does not want to peel. So, ideally, we would be using fresh basil. That was the plan. But again, we have a new baby in the house. And so, um been a little difficult getting out and like doing things and I went to the store this morning because I needed to get her some wet food to eat too and I had to get the ingredients for the show um and why is this not oh, this is driving me insane um and I was there like as they were stocking the shelves I was like hey do you guys have any fresh basil and they're like no sorry the shipment was bad and like they the way HEB works is they don't put out um, like anything if they think it's bad, which is nice on the one hand because yes, I just want fresh ingredients, 
But also, I just want fresh ingredients, so it's a little bit of a bummer when, um, when I couldn't have fresh basil. So I ended up getting the next best thing, I guess. It's like a basil paste. It's still got the flavor, it's still got the smell. Um, except, God, it just looks like basil toothpaste. A little bit disappointed, but the flavor's still gonna be there. It still smells really good. So we're gonna use this for our pesto as well. Now, pesto is typically a, um, a basil-based sauce or like spread. So we tend to use lots and lots of basil in it. I'm gonna do about half of this thing, but if you've got fresh basil with you, do like two or three big handfuls of it. So let's get this in there. There we go. Okay, and then the next is half a lemon for the juice. And the other half, after the show, we're gonna give to Panini and watch her bark at it. It's gonna be so cute. <laughs> All right, so get your lemon. Um, it's easier to cut it and easier to juice it if you roll it the way I did just now. So just take your lemon, put your hand straight on it, roll it on your cutting board and slice it in half. We're gonna do half a lemon in here. Oh, and the seeds, that's okay. Seeds never killed anyone. There we go. Hit it with some salt and pepper. Little bit of pepper. You know what, I'm gonna put some more of this basil stuff in here. I so would have loved to have fresh basil, but you know what, that's okay. All right, we're gonna put this on, and we're gonna slowly drizzle in our olive oil. Um, you know what? I don't even think I necessarily need to do that. I could have just probably put it all together. But you want to do that if you've got the fresh basil to get the, the leaves ground down first. And then you start adding this to kind of thicken it up. So it's going to get real loud. So if you can't hear me, I'm so sorry. into a bowl. Oh no. <laughs> it just splattered on my cabinet. That's okay. So what happens when you have like a jet powered blender. Alright, I'm going to clear off my station because these little scraps are driving me insane. That'll smell good. You know, just Ooh, the lemon in that just like brightens up the pesto and makes it taste good. I mean, everything about pesto is like a light, summery flavor, but that half a lemon really takes it from tasting good to tasting amazing.
stuff. So I'm going to be scooping out the kind of chunky bits. But if you like your pesto a little thinner, then you can just do the whole thing. Again, I put just a tiny bit too much olive oil. But whatever you don't use in your paninis today, you can save and make more paninis with, or you can save and put it in a salad dressing. Oh God, I love pesto on salad dressings. Or um, pesto on a burger. That's always good. Pesto on a burger with like, ooh, with some uh, grilled mushrooms. Ooh, you know what? Actually, shoot, that sounds really good. I might make that this week. Like a pesto lamb burger. Grilled mushrooms. Ooh, oh, and capers and red onion. And arugula, oh, on a ciabatta bun. Ooh, that sounds so good. Ooh, I'm gonna make that. <laughs> sounds amazing. You know what, I'll make it and I'll post it on my Patreon page. So that way you guys can see how tasty it turned out. All right, now I've got the majority of it. I'm gonna actually strain off a bit of this excess olive oil. What are you doing, Pixel? Ooh, and feta in that burger too. That would be good. All right, let me wipe it off. I don't want to get olive oil on the counters. And here is our super simple, really delicious homemade pesto. I'm going to put this on everything. I really hope I don't use all of it today. I might. There's a very good chance I might. But it's super easy to make. I've got all the ingredients here. Because um, again, it's just like a handful of ingredients. Actually, there's a little bit more of the chunky good stuff. I'm going to try and get that. This is not for pixels, though. No, it's not for pixels. Okay. Alright. Now that we've got our pesto done, um, we're going to go ahead and... Hi, tiny puppy. She's sleeping out on my desk again. Uh, will you take her out to the bathroom? She might have to go. I have to go. Oh, okay. Josh is on puppy duty right now. All right, uh, I'm going to just wipe down my cutting board because I don't want the bread to get olive oil on it yet. Okay. So we're going to take our Italian loaf. I love Italian bread. Um, I already cut off a little slice. I had it for breakfast today. I couldn't help myself, but I just, oh God, the way it smells. It's so good. I love Italian bread. Um, so we're going to cut about half inch slices, about that thickness for our paninis. Um, they're going to be kind of small paninis, but that's okay. You want it to be a little bit on the thick side just so it doesn't burn because this is a press so the bread's going to go down. It's not like making a grilled cheese, it's a little bit different. for later because I'm going to make French toast out of this. I'm going to make sandwiches out of this. This is great Ooh, when it goes stale for bread pudding. But the smell, oh man. In college for a semester, I worked at a bakery. Um, I was the bakery manager. It was pretty cool. So I'd get in at like 5.36 in the morning and all morning until like 11, all I would do is just bake pastries and bread and it was the best smelling thing. And my boss was really cool there. Um, whenever, 
whenever there was like a day old loaf of bread or if we made too much, like if someone had proofed too many the night before, she was always like, do you just want to take that loaf home with you? And I was always like, heck yeah, I would take that loaf home with me. Are you kidding? I'll take all the bread home. I love bread. That's why when Josh and I were doing no carbs, no sugar, it was so difficult because I could just sit there and seriously like eat an entire loaf of bread and feel really bad about it, but not that bad about it. Mm. Oh my gosh, that's good. Okay, I want to rinse off my tomatoes because I didn't really get a chance to get rinsed in the store. Like I took them off the guy's cart. I was like, oh, these look good. I'll take them. So I'm going to rinse these really fast and we'll slice them up. I'm just going to do two for now. Um, oh, we need to cut up our mozzarella. So I'm actually going to transfer these over here. I'm making quite a few sandwiches because my mom is on the way. Um, she's going to meet her new grand dog today. So she's going to get some. Josh and I are going to have some. The puppies get to watch. So, all right, take your mozzarella. I just happened to get a really big like log of mozzarella, mostly because I love mozzarella. But um, just slice it up. You want good like medallion sized slices of mozzarella. I love cheese. Is this already sliced? It is! What? I'm cutting into cheese that's already been sliced. I should maybe read the things on the shelves. That's a thought, huh, Pixel? Oh, well, okay. If your mozzarella is already sliced, like my mozzarella is already sliced, I guess just peel them apart. I had no idea. That's pretty neat, huh? You say, I don't care, mommy. I just want a piece of cheese. She had the shishitos in the shot. Okay, I give you a piece of cheese. Good catch. All right. Slice up your tomatoes. Now, I picked Roma tomatoes because I'm not a big tomato fan, but I really, really like Roma tomatoes. Um, if you have any other kind of tomato, that's fine too. Um, I guess I'm like the worst person to talk about tomato types with because I, I don't like tomatoes very much. It takes a lot for me to eat a tomato. Um, like a good big slice of Italian bread. So <laughs> typically I'm well informed of different types of fruits and vegetables and their names and stuff, but tomatoes, I, they're either Roma tomatoes or cherry tomatoes or other tomatoes <laughs> for me. I'm sure someone in the comments or someone on the Instagram page or, or the Facebook page or any of those things will be able to um, more properly inform me of the different tomato types. Honestly, I would really love that because I should know. Like, not liking a food is not an excuse to not know about the other kinds of foods. But I don't know, I think I like Roma tomatoes so much because they're not, it's mostly f like the flesh of the tomato, it's not the squishy insides, but ugh, I hate the squishy insides. Um, that's why I like normal tomatoes, the only time I will eat them is if they're fried green tomatoes. Ooh, I'll do that in an episode one time, because fried green tomatoes are great. Because to me, one, it's not squishy on the inside. It's like how when you fry okra, it's not slimy anymore. Um, but two is because fried green tomatoes, to me, just taste like eggplant. And I freaking love eggplant. Okay. So I've got my panini press. I'll plug it in so it can start getting hot. I'm gonna keep it open though, because you don't want it to get like too smoke and toasty. And while that's heating up, I'm gonna that's not that's not your cap. It has like basil toothpaste. That is so weird. Ooh, I'm gonna save this for the baby. <laughs> it's gonna be very cute. Um, well, that's heating up. I probably could have been slicing the tomatoes, but that's fine. Um, let's go ahead and cut the bread, though. So, I've got my pesto. I've got my 
veggies and cheese. And I've got my fresh hard Italian salami. Oh gosh, hold on, wait, I gotta clean off my area. I'm getting claustrophobic up in here. I really do, like I start to get like antsy in the kitchen if everything is in one spot. That's why you'll see me in an episode running back and forth because I just, I, things need to be in their place. Like this, our, our ninja is typically over here. And so having it next to my kitchen aid was a little bit stressful. Um, so again, I would just really love to reiterate that I don't have any sponsors. If you hear me saying a product's like brand name, it's not because anyone is paying me to say that, it's because I just legitimately like really love these products. Like I wanted a KitchenAid forever and Josh finally got me one last year for my birthday and I love it <laughs> so much. No, not for my birthday, it was Christmas because his, his family got me extensions for it they got me the spaghetti, like, cranks, and it's very exciting. Okay, so my grill's starting to get hot. I'm going to get a fresh spoon to spread the pepper. So you'll see a lot of people will spread um, thicker things with a spoon. Uh, like a lot of people will spread mayonnaise with a spoon because, I don't know, someone, someone started saying, actually, no, I do know why. I saw it once. Um, someone did it at a restaurant, like a chain restaurant, and they were like, yeah, you can just spread it a lot faster. It spreads more evenly or something like that. And it just like caught on. Ugh. It already smells delicious. All right, so we're gonna spread our pesto on both sides of our bread, on the inside. So I've got, out, whoo, 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 got a little bit too close to the grill. I'm gonna scoop that over. I know that hurt. What'd you do? I went to go grab the pesto and I got too close to it. Hey, how many of these do you want? That's what I thought. I cut it up for five sandwiches because I'm smart. Okie dokie. is though because they are basically that's not gonna feel good that's okay um they're basically skillets but with those little grooves in them so skillets are generally non-stick um i'm using a hamilton beach hamilton beach products again no sponsors um hamilton beach products tend to be pretty reliable so i'm not worried about greasing up the grill or anything um mostly i just want to make sure that everything is cooking all the way through It sounds like it's gonna taste good. Let's see how it do. A little bit longer. I love paninis. That's why I named my puppy that. All right, let's get the other one prepped. So I just did a tomato mozzarella. I'll make Josh's now. He doesn't really like tomatoes. So I will do mozzarella and salami for him. And then for me, I'm going to do um, 
All three, because I like food. <laughs> There's no such thing as a bad ingredient. Um, so I'm going to do, for mine, the mozzarella and the tomatoes and the, uh, whoop, a little bit longer. We want it to get just kind of golden on the outside. You really want those signature panini, like, grill marks on it, too. That little chunk of garlic didn't really blend up very well, but hey, that's all right. I like garlic. Oh, this is Josh's sandwich. Hey, that's okay. He likes garlic, too. Sometimes I'll just eat hard salami by itself. I'll like grab a handful of it and just chow down. Um, did she go to the bathroom? Yeah, good job, puppy. Um, what was I saying? Oh, I'll just eat hard salami as it is, which is why my sandwich is going to have everything on it. Yeah, I want one with everything. I want tomatoes and salami. Oh, do you? Yeah. Okay. Too late. Well, I just put yours in without okay. tomatoes. Don't worry about it. Well, no, I'm making you two. Okay, we'll make one with them. Thank you. You're welcome. That's one of his benefits of me doing the show is he gets to eat all the foods. Oh no, I'm running out of pesto. That's okay, I'll make more. I got the stuff. Oh, I might not have enough these ones. Okay, a little bit longer on that one. So I guess that first one will be from a mom. This one will be one of Josh's. This one will be mine. And then one of them just might not have to have pesto on it. You know what? That's okay. Just three slices. So I've been doing, because my slices of mozzarella are kind of big. So I'm doing two slices of mozzarella, three slices of the Roma tomatoes, and then three slices of the Italian hard salami. And then tapping it all together. Oh, yep. We done. Services. It slid right out of the back of the panini press. That's okay. I clean my whole kitchen before the show anyway, and then I clean it again after the show, so it'll be fine. It's not a big deal. Okay. Oh no, I've got just enough pesto for one more sandwich. I guess I'm gonna have to make more for that burger I was talking about. That's okay. So it's gonna be kind of light on the pesto. I went heavy on the first one. Yeah, just one side will have pesto, I suppose. That's okay. Right, he said he wanted everything on it. Two slices of mozzarella, three slices of those tomatoes, three slices of the hard salami, good amount of pesto sandwiched in between this amazing Italian bread. That's good lunch. 
little bit longer. Yeah, that's gonna be tasty. I knew this was gonna be a short episode. It's only been 30 minutes and I'm already basically done. I'm gonna sip on some more of this. Mmm. Oh, it would be cute. Oh gosh, that is strong. If I bring Panini in here and give her that lemon at the end of the episode. That would be stinking adorable. All right, let's try and not knock it off the girl this time. Nope, mm, did it again. Come back here, sandwich. I'm so frustrated right now. sandwich on. They smell delicious. Let's get this last sandwich on. Ah! Oh no! It was too tall! It slid right off. <laughs> okay, we have one kind of grilled tomato. You're just gonna be done. Sorry, mister. There we go. Get back in there. So don't make your paninis too tall or else they'll slide out of the grill. Um, let me plate these from a fan. Oh, it's all gone. I'm gonna have to make way more pesto because I like it too much. We'll give Josh the big plate. So that one is for me. That was one of his, and this one's my mom's. Okay. sister now? Yeah. Well, once this panini is finished, that's it for today's episode. So remember, pesto, super, super easy to make. Um, fresh basil is preferable, but honestly, this like basil paste toothpaste didn't end up being that bad. Um, still smells good. I imagine it tastes good on the sandwich. It tasted good when I tasted it in there. Um, oh, the cheese. you to burn on the grill. All right, we're going to take you off before you make a giant mess. There you go. And take you off too. And unplug you. Um, what was I saying? Oh, so remember, pesto, super, super easy to make. Um, fresh basil is preferable, but that stuff, honestly, didn't really do too bad. These look really good, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, if you have fresh basil, use a little bit more than you think, because once it blends down... Oh, gosh, I have a dog hair on my face. Um, once it blends down, it's gonna, like, drastically reduce in size. It's like whenever you cook spinach. You put a lot in the pan, and then you end up with, like, barely even one full serving. Um... So two, three full handfuls of basil to about two big cloves of garlic, half a lemon, olive oil, salt and pepper, and that's it. That's all you have to do for homemade pesto. It's like the easiest thing on the planet. Um, if you wanna do paninis, again, you can use my personal favorite Italian bread, or you could go with um, ciabatta bread I've seen a lot of people do. Um, I've had a panini once on pumpernickel. That was amazing, mostly because I really like pumpernickel. But um, tomato and mozzarella, pretty standard. Put in some salami, some ham, some turkey even. But honestly, 
It's a grilled sandwich. Like, you can put whatever you want in there. If you want to put, like, if you want to make it a dessert sandwich, you can put brie and bananas in there. Actually, that sounds really good. I might do that. That sounds delicious with, like, a cinnamon swirl bun. Ooh. I'm going to make that sometime. It sounds really good. Um, all right. Well, that wraps up this episode. Hey, baby. Bring the puppy back. She'll do the sign off because it is it is her episode. Hey, Josh. He's got his headset on. Hold on. That was today's episode with our paninis for panini. Hi, baby. That's what you were named after. You're kind of the same color. Say, I don't care. I don't care, though. Um, all right. So if you guys like what you're seeing, please subscribe, share, watch it again. Um, you can always check out my website. I post all of the... Oh, oh she don't like what's that. the matter? She don't like waving. <laughs> okay. No waving. Um, if you check out my website, uh, kinkitchenlive.com, I post all the recipes, I post all the episodes so that you don't have to watch them live, you can watch them later. Um, and then follow us on all of the social medias. Everything is at Ken Kitchen Live. sometimes underscore, sometimes not, but type it in, you'll find me. Um, if you like what you're seeing and you want to support the show, please go to my Patreon page. You can suggest episodes, you can hang out with me. Um, I've got a lot of cool Patreon rewards on there, so I will see you guys next week. Say goodbye. I will make you wave. You don't like that. Okay. <laughs> Bye, home cooks.